for the modern smoker. Long Island's newest number one spot for all of your smoking needs. From pipes, water pipes, and other tobacco smoking accessories to ashtrays, candles, incense, hand-blown glass, tapestries, body, jewelry, and truly unique gift ideas that you won't find anywhere else. For more information, visit their website at go to burn.com. Burn for the modern smoker. Carrying the highest quality glass smoking products available at the lowest prices in the area. I was introduced to glass through a glass pipe. Glass was such an industrial process that for someone to make a pipe to smoke out of was just kind of crazy. It's an art scene, and I think there's a culture that surrounds it. I'd say that's the best way to describe it. Is it's not quite a pipe scene. It's a, it's a collective of artists who have the same like-minded interests, and they want to create and express themselves through glass. Legends of yesteryear, nobody knows them. They act like they exist behind doors that are closing, but that door's revolving like the planet we all on. We want people to be speaking about us when we all go. To me, winning the Pipe Classic is the judgment among my peers. It's among my peers is glass blowers, and among my peers is like people. There's so much talent here. I'm just happy that any of these guys win, to be honest. It's just, you see them bringing their game, and there's very few competitions where people are bringing their game, and it's it, this is an amazing event. So I'm happy for anyone who wins, you know? Something I do all the time, too, but, you know, sometimes the, that roll of the dice doesn't end up right. <laughs> If there's the opportunity to take a torch or a trophy or something like that home, that's awesome. You know, like that just that's the cherry on top of, you know, hanging out with my friends for a week. So fully prepared, waiting for the game to begin. Remain relevant. You can hear my name on the wind. Keep my brain in the bin. It's under close observation. It takes a lot to win. Don't know it. Because it gets so hot on the top and the heat drops down. It, I'm sure it runs. Uh, 
my shit, if it goes off like this, it's gonna ruin, like, one angle's gonna ruin what it does. Your piece have a lot of thin parts like that? Um, it, once it's, when it's, like, standing, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. I'm willing to move around there. If you want to even share, take you back to, like, if you need to, I'm gonna try to that. I don't like having, I don't like the, you guys having a share challenge. Yeah. No, I meant safely, though, if he had, like, hey, I need a temp real quick or whatever. Or that would do it fine, too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to tap any of your yeah, yeah, yeah. Just killing issues. Um, our kill and fell through that was supposed to come, uh, was supposed to be here last week. Um, so we had a local glass blower came and, and uh, let us use his, but it's, it's got some issue. It's not, uh, it's not getting temperature fast enough, so we'll figure it out. Been lucky enough to be a part of a few different parties, a number of demos. I've never actually been in a competition to where, you know, yeah, like the pipe classic, you know what I mean? Like, so you come and you, you have a limited time to make a piece and you're against, you know, well-known artists from around the country. Um, so no, I've never been in that, in that, in this situation before. My name's Danny Camp. I blow glass out of Portland, Maine. Um, I would say my inspirations are, I'll bring it back to Maine and I'll say that Steve Bates is, is a big inspiration to me and uh, Mr. Gray is a big inspiration to me. I started working in 2003. I actually am self-taught. I had an opportunity to learn from some people, but schedules was never worked out, so I ended up doing it on my own. I'm Matt McGlam from Minden, Vermont. I work in my home studio. Honestly, soft glass blowing was my biggest inspiration starting off. Like, Mr. Rogers and stuff, like, actually got me introduced to glass at a young age. But it wasn't until I was older and into other things that, like, I found this industry. And it's just been amazing ever since I found it. I started a shop that was retail only in art. And then to find my transition into the pipe world has been awesome for me. So I really enjoyed it. But I started blowing glass in, in September 2001, so I'm actually at my 13 year mark this month. So this is pretty sweet to be in the classic this year. Um, I'm JD Mapleston, I live in Washington. I've lived on the east side of Washington, the west side of Washington. I currently reside in Bellingham. Um, that's about it. Um, I learned under a guy named Angel. He gave me a crash course in eight hours. And after that, I bought a book from Bondu, a kiln and a torch, and spent about a year in my garage. <laughs> the classic is really personable. Every artist gets to meet every person who comes to the event if they're willing to come up and say hi to us. Like, we want to say hi to everybody. And some people are kind of weary about coming up and saying hi to us because we've been working our asses off and they think that we're famous, but we're really just people. And all we really want to do is just like go to work tomorrow and do what we do. And without every person that supports us, we really couldn't do it. So it's really awesome to have people come up and say hi and like introduce themselves and tell us how much they appreciate our work because we appreciate having them collect our work.
kill him, kill him to be here at like 12.30. So I gotta do what I do best and uh, wait till then. So what happened with the kiln? Uh, we almost had a pipe classic tragedy. Uh, one of our kilns was malfunctioning, and uh, thanks to Sam Lyons, he fucking saved the day, and uh, drove all the way to Brattleboro and back, spent six hours in the car, got another kiln. Uh, we met at about one in the morning, switched them up, everything worked perfectly. Mike DePano did a bunch of quick electrical work, and uh, also saved the day, and it was amazing. Now yeah, we're like, flowing like smoothly. Six, Yeah, my, my, my heel went, um, you know, you do a practice piece, and uh, I did a practice piece, and, um, you know, I had a little time to spare. You know, I, I pushed it a little harder in this in the, co in the competition, and I ended up with uh, a piece that was a little bit bigger, a little bit more detailed, and, um, yeah, and I was happy with it. I was able to do a couple extra things for it, and uh, it went as planned. Yes. So how's the heat going? Oh, hey, that's going pretty good. Got about an hour to wrap up. Um, Watching this guy do his wells here, it's pretty awesome. Excuse me. Yeah, man. Feeling good about it though. We got two pieces down, so we got to put them together. So that's gonna be a hard part as well. So I don't know. Lots to do. Yeah, it went pretty well. It went a little faster than I expected, which allowed me to make things, but I wasn't expecting to make. So it was a little different. I wasn't used to that. Usually I'm stressing the time limit. So this time I was definitely a little stressed out by finishing too fast. But it was cool and it all came together and I'm happy about it. I really am, so. The first half of my heat went really smoothly. I was really stoked. At the end of my heat, I was a step ahead of where I wanted to be, so I felt really strong and confident about it. The second part of my heat went pretty well. I got the first four of my legs on, or the first three of my legs on, my fourth leg when I put it on. It cracked on me and I got really stressed out because it was the, the last of my legs, it cracked. I was able to fix it, smooth everything out and finish it to where when I put the piece in the kiln, I can confidently say it's one of my favorite pieces and I'm really proud of what I made today. something that I'm proud of. That's all I wanted to make today, which is something that I was proud of. So if I'm not proud of it, I can't rep it. <laughs> and I can walk around happy all week long now because I accomplished my goal. I made something I'm proud of. It's the Saget, man. <laughs> it was the Saget. I had to bring the power of the Saget today. It helped. Congratulations, man. Thank you, guys. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Yeah. Let's have a Yeah. Oh, you see it. Proud of you, dog. That was quick. Yeah. 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 It all happened so fast. Yeah. <laughs> I've competed in um, the Boro Derby. It's up in Spokane. We make Pinewood Derby cars. And um, they also called it the online flame off the first year. And um, Thanksgiving Day flame off in Olympia about three years ago. We did a flame off there where Gordman took first place. And then the Pipe Classic last year. And then this year's Pipe Classic. My name is Herb Carson. I'm from Portland, Oregon. I started blowing glass in 2001. Not sure, springtime sometime 2001. I learned under a cat in Oregon. Um, just someone that nobody knows, got mad skills, um, out on Mount Hood, started blowing glass in Brightwood. My biggest inspiration is hard to say. There's too many, too many, like just inspiration is all over in this industry. So I could never nail one down. There's made so many friends and so many ballers out there that are rocking hard, so. You know, really at the end of the day, it's not really about winning, it's just kind of about being out here and being a part of it and performing the best that you can. Because, you know, you can't plan for, you know, what's gonna happen during these competitions. Like, when, when it's all on the line, you never know what's gonna happen, so you can't get hung up on winning, but everybody wants to win, you know? So that's definitely why I'm here. <laughs> 10 minutes, sir. Can't tell if you can hear me or not. I don't think anyone can hear anything. But they're in the zone. Oh, that's good. Uh, all right, made it. Yeah, did it. I came here just like really wanting to make something that I'd be like stoked on and I did that, you know, we'll see what happens. It's anybody's game, you know, everyone's making really ridiculous work. <laughs> hey, my name is Hoobs Glass. I'm currently in uh, Garden Grove, California. And that's where I work. <laughs> I started in uh, 2002 uh, at a local head shop and uh, didn't really know much about the glass scene but uh, I saw some really cool pieces in that head shop and uh, they had like a little torch set up back there and I kind of just got on it and like my first day I spent probably like eight hours making little marbles you know and like no, no concept of time or anything it just went by so fast and I knew that it was something that I could do for a long long time you know and I've I've just been stuck with it ever since that day. <laughs> it's been 12 years now. It's a long time. My first few years I had really minimal instruction. Um, just a couple local guys that had been doing like sculptural stuff or little production stuff showed me the basics and then I kind of just went with it for a few years after that and then uh, Probably about uh, five years in, I took some classes with, with some really like distinguished, like well-known glass workers, you know, and that just like up, up, up the ante for me, you know, it taught me everything that I was missing. And I guess over the several next years, you know, I figured it all out. <laughs> You're on camera. Liam's gonna explain. Oh, the camera found you. Fuck she, oh. <laughs> How'd you meet though? That means fuck you in uh, Europe, by the way. It went well. It was, uh, I got easily a different set done than what I was trying to do, so I'm stoked on that. And uh, 
so she can get there tomorrow and get it finished. No, the hard part is tomorrow, so. <laughs> Was anything taking longer than expected? I mean, you know, it's a new environment, new space. I mean, I always surprise myself that I can do things faster and then get it like competition because I'm really trying to go fast. So today I like, I beat my, my time of like my practice piece, so I was ahead a little bit, but my scale is bigger, so just more volume, you know, more, more to work. But I'm still, it should work out tomorrow for me. I learned uh, initially from my friend Scott Tribble and a lot of indirect things from Jared Betty and then worked with uh, my friend Quave for a few years in the early years which is pretty like a pretty huge part in like a lot of the progression I feel like in the early stages but uh, my name's Jared I go by Gordman I blow glass from Seattle area Washington It's inspiration in glass. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are like pretty inspiring. Uh, I was initially, you know, initial inspirement just from my close group of friends I was around. Scott and Jared were uh, the main catalysts and uh, what drew me into glass. Um, but yeah, I know I'm a huge fan of like Banjo and Eugene. And always looked up to those gentlemen. I tried to make something that was going to be fun for me to make and something that I thought would play to my, what I consider my strong suits in work, which is like shaping and construction. It's like I enjoy doing a lot. So I kind of studied a little bit of like looking at some chandeliers to get some ideas for how to flow a piece together. But it's definitely a little helpful. So, how'd it go? Uh, went pretty good for the most part. I had a little bit of snags at the very beginning that I had to battle through. Uh, like an odd chunk of tubing that was really thick and blew out, a fair bit uneven. It took a few, little longer to battle than, it, than I had originally hoped, but made it through that. And then, yeah, I went to pull my whole neck and my tube down. And the whole tube cracked the entire length of it, which I was pretty fortunate, didn't ever break apart. So I was able to work the whole crack out, pull it down, work everything, work the whole air bubble out of it to the point past where my mouthpiece will be. So, um, yeah, pretty much where I expected to be, exception of like 10 minutes of work. So you have plenty of time to finish the rest of the piece then? Yeah, and everything's like pretty much on track for what I hope to be. Glad to hear. tomorrow goes well. I don't see why I wouldn't. My heat went as planned up until the last 30 minutes and um, disaster struck. My head broke off right when I was finishing my piece. I was going to have enough time to just kind of relax, but I uh, had to whip up a new head real quick, stuck it back on, it fell off, uh, picked it back up, stuck it back on, had like 30 seconds to spare before I threw my piece back in the kiln and it made it, so we're good I think. But other than that, yeah, everything was going to plan until the unplanned happened, so. 
It went well. Uh, I had done like a small little trial practice. I was probably like a tenth of the scale of my actual piece, um, but everything went smooth. Like it was, it was really nice. Like no real big issues. Uh, I was pleased with the way everything worked out. Um, I'll tell you what I was trying to make. I tried to make like this replica uh, crystal skull. That's kind of. Uh, you know, the theory is that there's like 13 crystal skulls that have been found over history and uh, scientists can't tell how old they are, but people believe that like, you know, they hold like healing powers or like something crazy will happen if uh, they're all brought together in one place and uh, or that like they are actually like uh, kind of like libraries for like the universe, you know, and like other like worldly beings have like put their like conscious like knowledge into these things and it's just weird weird crazy stuff about those things that interests me anything about aliens you know so that's what my piece was this year and it's got like a functioning brain inside of it that you could smoke out of so that's pretty cool you know i had fun making it and i just wanted to make a piece that was like fun for me you know and something that i would enjoy and I think I pulled it off, so like I'm stoked, you know. Yeah. First couple hours of the second heat were going like super smoothly, and then it wasn't until I started like the last like final construction at a random crack that just popped up, I don't, I don't even know when it happened. I was just like, was about to put the piece back. Ran a crack I had to fix. Fix that, and was still able to do the next move I planned on anyway, so I didn't even lose the move, which was pretty nice. So, like, continued through, and then, yeah, the last little bit, when I tried to get the thing to stand even, I had a little bit of, like, a little bit of some weird troubles in a couple different areas, like a couple of, like, a couple of the bends cracked that I had to fix, which, I don't know. Any, any of those weird crack problems, they're all like went away super easy, which is very nice. <laughs> I don't always do that. So. Uh, a little bit cramped at times, but that was uh, partially of my own misjudgment of an uh, incredibly long handle I was working off of. So there's uh, definitely a knocked into the hood a good 10 or 20 times with my handle. Great time so far, so happy to be out here. What's the first thing you're gonna do? Uh, drink some water, clean my bench. <laughs> I started blowing glass in 99 and I started in the hot shop and just worked with all these different people and uh, you know turned over into the borough world because I could work it at my studio at home and just kept going. Learned a lot of different techs from a lot of different people, a lot of different fields. Worked with Emilio Santini, 
Christopher McRoy, JP Toro taught me a lot of stuff. Andrew Morris, go by AKM, from Richmond, Virginia. It's my home base. It's where I blow glass out of. done the champs competitions in Las Vegas and uh, done some glass blowing stuff there so I've definitely been under pressure and blown glass in that type of environment and learned some stuff from that and brought my A game here from with that knowledge. Always wanted to be here. I've definitely always wanted to blow glass here. Um, everyone knows who wins the Pipe Classic. Um, I'm just really, really pleased to be working with all these guys here, and I just, you know, I want to be, uh, I want to win. I want the torch, I want the cred. I started in 2008. I, my first year, I took a bunch of classes from the Philly Cats, Slinger and Snick and Jag. And then a bunch of the Austin Cats, uh, Salt and Micah Evans, and I definitely got a huge jump on my entire career just from those, those influences. Max Kind, go by Kind, and I'm down in Trill City ATX. I would say my biggest influence is definitely Mike Evans. I learned probably the most from that dude and feel like he's definitely pushing it on totally different levels than everybody else in the, in the glass or the pipe game for that matter. This is my first competition ever, so it was, it was really exciting to go into like that. Got everything done, which was the main goal. <laughs> Wish I had a little more time to tweak a few things here and there, but everything was great all in all. I'm really happy with what I did. Hey, everyone's got something really awesome in their bag of tricks, so it's uh, they're all crushers and. Every single one of these guys here is, you know, someone that I've looked up to their work in one way or another. So, you know, everyone's coming with it, so hard to say. Really stoked to be here. Thanks, Burn Gallery. Thanks to everyone that's hooked me up with anything, color, glasses, all this stuff, all my people. So thanks to my crew in Virginia. Glad to be here, man.
<laughs> it's going a little slower. Would you, uh... So I made this piece that like kind of got bigger than I expected it to and that was all good. I made a bad choice in my materials um, and made a very significant part out of uh, an, a more inexpensive co color, the infamous China Black, very very notorious for cracking and ruining people's lives. and. Uh, it, it bit me where it counted, and the last move to pull out the piece to polish the little things, it, uh, it was hanging out of the kiln, and it, it, it had cracked right where it was hanging out of the kiln. Something I do all the time, too, but, you know, sometimes the, that roll of the dice doesn't end up right. <laughs>
I started blowing glass in 2006, but I didn't start making pipes until 2009. I apprenticed under Zach Puckowitz for two years. I'm Albo, and I'm from Philly. My biggest inspiration to my art in general is Jean-Michel Basquiat. He's a painter from the 80s. Um, and then I just I'll draw on life as my main source of inspiration. I've competed in the DFO twice and in the Glassroots competition once. My name is Bertoni, and I currently reside in Denver, Colorado. I started blowing glass in January of 1999. And I'm the defending champion. I made pipes from the start, but I really focused more on arts and crafts stuff until I moved to California in 2010, and that's when I became a piper. And uh, so I'd say about four and a half years, really, my style and my artwork has developed from nothing to something since then. Got an apprenticeship from a couple of guys, and uh, after a year, realized I wanted to keep doing it, so I bought all my own equipment, and. Uh, my college roommate at the time also got an apprenticeship with us, or with me, and uh, we just kind of kept going from there, and he does computer stuff now, and I still blow glass. I'm mostly inspired by, like, the natural world, animals, and, and natural life. I, I draw a lot of influence from the sea and the sky. I personally love the ocean. Um, it's kind of my, my, you know, it's it's my safe haven. It's my harbor. Um, artists that inspire me are really kind of everybody that's out there doing something new and, and the guys that are, are pushing the limit and have made a name for themselves and continue to create bigger, better work every time they, they step in front of a torch or behind a torch or whatever you want to call it. So. Uh, my name's Brendan Taylor. I uh, grew up in Rockville, Maryland. Lived in Arizona for like six years in Tucson, and now I live in Denver, Colorado. I uh, started actually five years ago this month, and uh, it's, it's been a crazy trip. <laughs> Uh, Tess won Webb uh, from Tucson, who's my rap partner. We were in a group together for a long time, and uh, he put me on over at Micah Blatt from Fathead Shop um, with Calvin and Yush and Nady and fuck, John Mims and uh, Herb and a bunch of people all really, and Carl Taylor, like all really helped me get started, you know. I was very lucky to be around a lot of people when I started. I'm trying to be original and creative. Like I find a lot of inspiration in like this, like the city. I live in the city, you know. I love the city. A lot of my power station stuff and like the telephone poles and all that type of shit has been kind of driven from living in the city for so long, you know. And, and uh, just kind of like, you know, I, uh, I, I I'm inspired by, you know, like just everyday stuff, you know, like just, just life in general is inspiring, you know. Awesome.
became like a buzzer beater type situation where I only had like a few minutes left to finish it. Um, and when I'd practice it, I had like finished it early. So it got drawn out a little bit, but the piece ended up coming out how I wanted it to. made Champ, and he is kind of like the local legend lake monster that lives in Lake Champlain. And um, they first saw him in 1601. It was actually um, during a like fight between like pilgrims and Indians type situation. And um, that was the first reporting of it. And there have been 300 reports of people seeing this lake monster that they named Champ. And um, it's, it's funny because people say that it's like a thing to draw tourists into this area and that's why it was like begun as a, as a you know, local myth, but there are like experts who claim that the thing is real. So um, I've made a sea monster before, so I kind of understood um, the composition that I wanted to go with. And I researched just like different pictures of Champ and different sculptures that have been made based off of that character. and. Um, different cartoon drawings based off of local cartoonists. So I kind of drew upon all of that to make my own rendition of it. And it's a, one is a bubbler, one's a Sherlock, and one's a spoon, so it's a three-pipe set. Perfect. Shout out to Jop, my studio mate. Uh, shout out to all my Philly mentors. And shout out my whole Colorado crew. Awesome. And Banjo. Shout out Banjo. I had a few problems on the first day, the first heat, first half of my heat. Um, I couldn't get this one seal properly, and it took, actually took me four tries before I got it, and uh, I was pretty happy afterwards. I was getting really frustrated, and uh, it, when it finally came together, it worked out pretty well, and then everything went relatively smoothly after that, so I'm pretty stoked. It was, uh, piece was bigger than and bigger than almost anything I have ever made and I was definitely outside of my comfort zone on it but uh, I really kind of think that's what this is about I didn't plan on going as big as I did but after seeing some of the other projects that were made it was like oh man you got to step up to get your rep up you know like it was a matter of, of either just going big or going home so I put everything I could into it and I'm, I'm super happy with how it came out and the fact that I got it in the kiln and everything like that, so. I've been in the Pipe Classic. This is my third time um, being here and this is a really fun, fun event just because there's so much personal time to kind of hang out with the other artists and the people and the collectors and things like that. Uh, the Burn Gallery are great hosts and it's always good to see them, you know, year after year, you come back and there's familiar faces and everybody's super friendly.
I actually, it actually went really well. Like I was like I did a practice piece at home and had some issues with it, but I knew how to fix those this time. So like when I was making the piece, it all went like surprisingly smooth. I had a little hiccup towards the end. I like lost one of the legs and had to like fucking put it back on there and shit. But you know, it was that was it was just a challenge. It's fun making a piece like that in 12 hours. You know, like. I'll kick you a little verse from one of my songs. And this is like some kind of older shit. Uh, it ain't even the cosmos. Avoid the obvious and question everything. The jig is up, start doing, stop practicing. Too much time spent wallowing and following, missing out and hollering about tomorrow when today is here. So represent what you preach. Don't be no soapbox screaming, yelling at all of the sheep and the squirrels and the pigeons, man. They ain't no believers. Carve your name in a tree. Be about your business. It's simple math. And even more so picturesque, no calculator needed to conduct a thorough check. People glance with your eyes and take a look at the clock. Life is a leaving ship, don't get left on the dock. Yo, mock, seven is the speed you must run to break the rules of the time and space continuum. So absorb all around. When it begins to pour, yesterday was back then, and that's what it stays there for. I love you, Pipe Classic. Oh, yeah. Thank you, man. Yep. Just no, no rhyme. Thanks. Thank you so much, man.
Now I gotta, I gotta stop by, start off by saying I'm not a religious man, but I do have someone I call Jesus now, because Sam Lyons saved by Classic. <laughs> Drove his ass six hours to get us a new kiln. All right, I always gotta thank GTT and Formula 420. They've been sponsoring for years. And uh, GTT actually, uh, every Pipe Classic introduces a new torch. And this year we got the Compressed Air, uh, Samurai, and uh, Delta Elite. Uh, my boy Lava Mike introducing his new product, Just the Tip, to clean your dabber. And uh, Bora World, Hot Breath, Glass Roots coming up in a few weeks. Adam V, who made major sacrifices to make sure we were all fed all week. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah May, who did such a good job keeping control of the whole thing. Some of my best friends, Eric and Sharon from Burn. Uh, Brandine made it from Turtle Case. Uh, and Te David from Intelligent Glass. Barry from EU, been sponsoring for years. Joe from Mountain Glass, who didn't show up, and I'm going to give him a lot of shit for that. All right, so let's get to it. First is, uh, is Glassblower's Choice. So this is when uh, the, all the competing artists choose which one was their favorite to move them the, mo the, the most. And uh, I was gonna, the award was gonna be the pig head, but this seems more appro appropriate. Uh, Kurt and Coyle made this cup. Yeah. Yeah. Proud of you. All right, everybody give it up for AKM. Well done, my friend, well done. All right, all right, third place. Takes home a thousand bucks in the cup. Gordon. Second place, uh, taking home that compressed air uh, Delta Elite goes to J.D. Mapleston. Get your ass up here. Dream. Thank you guys all. This is a dream come true. Just thank you. All right, this is it. First place. Takes home that compressed air samurai. The cup. The winner. Several of my, you know, my shop mates and stuff sat down and talked about it and uh, the unanimous vote was kind of AKM is the guy to watch. He's, he's, he's definitely got enough tricks up his sleeve to, you know, to wow a crowd and things like that and, and I, I definitely think he came correct. Like he brought A plus game and, and if he wins I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. AKM, I really like what he's got going on. He's he's got it going, in my opinion. You know that AKM piece though is just like that's going to be a hard one to top. I mean, you got a skull on top of another piece, so it, it's just insane. AKM, like Andrew, he's like the man. Like his skulls are insane, and his whole style is so unique and so different than everyone else's. Uh, I knew coming into the to the competition that AKM was gonna be the dude that brought it and was the dude to beat and he brought it. So my money's on that dude. AKM! <laughs> Y'all 
so much. Crazy amazing. I've always wanted to be here. Thanks for the burn. Thanks to everyone that supports me, man. You all are the best. Your winner's Pipe Classic Knot. But it's not over completely. So anybody who wants to, at this point, we go back to the burn gallery and we have what we call the total circus that is the auction. And uh, it's always fun. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, if you're interested in the auction, back to the burn gallery. That's it, everyone. Flame working competitions, and uh, they're a lot of fun. I've learned a lot from the previous ones, and I've definitely brought my A game to this one. There's always like a couple things here, like, ah, I would have did that. Yeah. Maybe a little bit earlier. Maybe I rushed that, but all in all, I'm... we'll have to deal with that, the kiln problem in the beginning. Pretty... Yeah. Didn't really, yeah, it didn't really affect me too much. I don't think I was too worried about it. The kiln was so close to temperature that it wasn't really an issue. Oh, don't worry. It might be Dosher calling. I think it's Dosher. He's on the 